I thought I'd take a minute or two to show you my uh, large knife that I carry on occasion. And this is the Condor Hudson Bay knife. Now it's not a new knife to the market by any means. It's been around for quite a while. Deer flies. And uh, I bought this a number of years ago before they started going up in price. I think I paid less than $20 Canadian for it, which is quite cheap if you know the exchange on the Canadian dollar. But when the knife arrived, I was a little bit disappointed. Now, it was a big knife, no question about it. I'll put the specs on the screen so you can see. But basically, it's a 3 16 inch blade thickness, 8 inch overall blade, very thick this way. I'll measure it and put that on the screen as well. And I'll give you the overall length as well. It's a big, heavy, thick knife. Very traditional look. It's made to look as if it's hammered forged. It's not. I'm sure that's just a, in the manufacturing. But with, when I received the knife, I was very disappointed. I'm going to put a picture on the screen of what the knife looks like when you buy it new. It doesn't look a whole lot like this. The handle was much shorter. There was some hardwood slabs on it, quite thin. And with my extra large hands, it just didn't fit. My friend Mark from Adventure Time Outdoors just did a video where he talked about his Hudson Bay knife and how much it uh, disappointed him in many ways. It's a big knife. But can it be made to be an all-purpose knife? Well, I think I've done okay with it. What I've done is first I uh, ground off with, a ha with an angle grinder, ground off the, the pins and took the hardwood scales off. Then very slowly, dipping it in water as I went, I moved the handle forward right up to the edge of the blade. Very, very little ricasso. Virtually less than a quarter of an inch ricasso left. That gave me at least three quarters of an inch longer handle. Then I made some homemade micarta, and where it didn't have a lanyard hole before, I put a lanyard hole in. Now, I'm not very experienced at doing micarta, but uh, I think this turned out okay. It was quite, quite good. I'll give you a close-up of what that looks like. And this is just made from a pair of brown pants and a pair of beige pants picked up at Value Village, laminated together in layers using auto epoxy. And then I just took my time and slowly shaped it till I got something that fits my big hand. And fit it does. It made all the difference in the feel of this hand, this blade in my hand. Lanyard on the end provides a sense of security if I need it. Allows me to chop. Now, I'm not a big knife chopping person, but for small chopping tasks and definitely for splitting tasks, which I'll show you in a second, this works very well. Unfortunately, the edge was very, very obtuse. It had something of a Scandi or, Scandi or convex, or people like to refer to it as a Scandivex. But chop, it would barely penetrate wood, even with the weight of it. Not a problem. An axe file, sandpaper, take your time, and I raised the edge. It's double what it was originally. Now. I was a little worried I made it too thin, but I've been doing quite a bit of work with it. I feel no rolls, no chips, I see no chips, there's no rolls on it, and it's still quite sharp. How thin can you go with 1075 steel? I don't know, I guess it depends a lot on the heat treat. I also took that same file and squared off the back. Now this will work as a ferrocerium striker. Just take an edge off my back of my fingernail. It'll work to scrape bark, it'll work to scrape uh, fat wood off a piece of fat wood. The size of the knife lends itself quite well to a draw knife. Although I haven't had much use for that, it would. It's forward heavy so it will chop. But what this does better than anything is baton. That thick slab of metal and even with the degree that I brought it back that's still quite a wide blade down towards the point. This splits incredibly well. Yet I can still feather stick with it but it's a big piece of metal. I don't carry it on my waist. I do carry it in my backpack when I take it out. I usually pair it with a small knife like my XXX Sable, what I'm carrying today. And of course a saw, I always have a saw. I'm gonna take a few minutes to show you this thing in action. Seasoned maple. It was already split, so I didn't, can't uh, take it from full-size log, but stronger than my baton.
much stronger than my baton. Okay, it's not an axe, but it will chop. It'll also split. It's not a fine carving knife, but it'll feather reasonably well. But will it ever split when batoning? When do you carry a knife like this? Well, you could carry it as your one and only. Not for me, I would always pair it with a different knife. I would probably take this in place of a hatchet. I could take a tree down with it, a reasonable sized tree, using the beaver chew method going around the outside of it. I could split this cross grain and take that tree and buck it up with, the same as I would with a hatchet. It would replace a small hatchet. It won't replace a large hatchet or a small axe. But in those days when I don't feel like taking an axe with me, like today, I wasn't going to be splitting or taking down big trees. Those deer flies are something else here today. This will fill a nice niche. I'll tell you what else it'll do. It'll carve. No, not the fine edge work that you expect from a small carving knife, but this will do the work that a carving hatchet will do to a certain degree. It has a nice little swing to it. The shape of the handle as it flares towards the back somewhat guarantees that it won't slip out of my hand. It allows for some nice, just small chop cuts. So it's not the perfect knife. But done up and modified the way that I mentioned, it's a better knife than it was, and it's something that will remain in my arsenal. If you can find one cheap, you may want to pick it up, because with very little skill you can turn it into something much more useful. Okay. 
Well, if you found this short review of my Hudson Bay by Condor at all interesting, maybe you'll consider subscribing to my channel. But in the meantime, get out and explore. Take that path less traveled. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.